I hope everybody's having a good Sunday so far. Uh, my name's Carver Moore. I'm one of the ministers at the Chestnut Mountain Church of Christ in Chestnut Mountain, Tennessee. And once again, we're uh, putting another uh, uh, video Bible study uh, for you um, for your for your Sunday for your viewing. In case you uh, don't want to venture out during this uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, and uh, but we're we're currently meeting at the Chestnut Mountain Church of Christ in Chestnut Mountain, Tennessee, and. Uh, but we want to still put some lessons before you, uh, uh, pre-record our sermons and, and put them out on Sunday for those that might not have a place to worship or, or might, you know, might worship at Chestnut Mound and, and just, you know, for whatever reason, health-wise or uh, whatever reason, they, they just don't want to get out. They don't want to chance it. So uh, we hope these uh, lessons have been uplifting to you and uh, just during this weird time, I mean, just... Uh, it's um, it's just a crazy time that our nation is is facing, but we know that with God uh, we can get through this with faith and um, you know just lean on Him. So uh, in the time we have today, and again this is the same uh, sermon that I would preach or that I'm going to be preaching at uh, Chestnut Mound, and uh, but I want us to talk about worry. My friends, worry will bog you down. That's the title of the lesson this morning. Worry will bog you down. And if you've got your Bibles with you, please turn over to the book of Matthew, chapter number 6, verses 25 through 34. We're not going to go through and read all those, but I'll encourage you to read along as I'm preaching and, and teaching. And, and when this is over, I hope that you'll read and study that uh, in depth even further. But Friends, everyone has dealt with worry at some time or other in their lives. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the word worry means to feel or experience concern or anxiety. Does that sound like you? Does that sound like 2020? 2020 has been full of a lot of anxious moments. You had the, 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 the tornado in March. Then you had the coronavirus. And then now we've got this uh, 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 social unrest with the uh, uh, the civil rights and things like that. So well, there's a lot of worry, a lot of concern, a lot of anxiety that w our world is facing right now. And you know what worry is guaranteed to do, friends? Worry is guaranteed to make you miserable and draw you away from God. Worry will consume your life and it will negatively affect those around you. So in the time we have this morning, I want you to consider three ways that you can better deal with worry and prevent it from consuming your life and affecting your relationship with others and most importantly, affecting your relationship with God. Number one, putting undue pressure on yourself leads to worry. This was common in Jesus' time, especially with the disciples. Think about Peter uh, when Jesus told him about his coming crucifixion in Matthew chapter number 16. And in verse 22, we see Peter tells Jesus, This shall not happen to you. Peter lets his love for Jesus get in the way of what Jesus was actually on this earth for. Peter gets himself so worked up that Jesus has to rebuke him. Consider the children of Israel throughout the book of Exodus. You know, they're led out. Moses leads them out of Egypt. He leads them into the wilderness. They wander around for 40 years in the wilderness. Then they get to thinking, we're never going to get to where we're going. They begin to worry. They begin to think, well, maybe it was better. Maybe we had it better in Egypt. But in reality, friends, what happened? It all worked out in the end. The children of Israel, just like Peter, they begin to psych themselves out. It's like, like, like or, or, or overthink things. That's another word for worries, to psych yourself out or to overthink. Friends, sometimes we psych ourselves out or sometimes we overthink things. Friends, we face so many deadlines. We face health issues. We face, we face major decisions in our lives like where to go to school, who to date, who to marry, even something as simple as what we're going to eat. During this, uh, well, actually before the uh, pandemic started, for a little over a year, me and my, uh, me and my, one of my best friends, we've been uh, uh, doing a lot of bass fishing, and recently we've been uh, uh, fishing bass tournaments. Uh, we fish every, you know, every Tuesday night, and sometimes we fish uh, uh, Saturday morning tournaments, things like that, and uh, you know, a lot of pressure involved. I remember the first one that I ever fished with him. Me and him, we just uh, we got to the point to where you know we were on a time crunch, and it felt like nothing was working right. The fish weren't biting, and 
we just began to uh, psych ourselves out, get you know, get upset with each other, uh, uh, worry ourselves, and uh, but in the end, it was all good. You know, when we were when it was over, we were back. You know, it wasn't like you know nothing had even happened. But sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves that we allow ourselves to uh, you know just get psyched out, stress ourselves out. And friends, too often we want to be perfect. And it causes us to overthink, just like me and my buddy in the fishing tournament. You know, we want to catch seven, eight, nine pound bass, large smallmouth bass, every cast. And, that, and, and, and that's just not how it works. You know, it might work for some people, but that's just not how it's going to work for us. You know, because we're not professionals. Just in this life, nobody's going to be perfect. Nobody's going to have a perfect life. Nobody's going to come down here and live a perfect life except for Jesus Christ. So, friends, quit trying to be perfect. Because if you if, if you if you spend your whole life trying to be perfect, you're going to live a miserable existence because it's impossible to live a perfect life. So, what should we do when we when we when we catch ourselves overthinking things? When we catch ourselves sucking ourselves out? Well, in Philippians four and verse number six, it says, "Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known." to God. Isn't that awesome? All we have to do is pray and he'll hear us. Give us give him our struggles. We also we can't live in the past. Have you ever done something that you wish you hadn't done? You look back on it and you think, well that was that that was stupid. Why in the world did I ever do that? Do you ever wish you could have done something differently? Do these feelings or emotions cause you to worry yourself to death? Do they cause you to psych yourself out and wish, you know, just, just spend all your time wishing you go back and change whatever that that was? But we can't. And in Jeremiah chapter number 29 and verse 11, in Jeremiah chapter number 29 and verse 11, if you got your Bibles with you, uh, uh, this is addressed. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God knows our plans. God knows our plans before we even, before we even know our plans. So, friends, stop living in the past because you'll worry yourself to death. It'll put undue pressure on yourself. It will control your life. Those thoughts will live rent-free in your head. So number two, worry causes you to lash out at those that you love the most. Think about how you feel when you have a ton of things on your mind. Maybe you're, put, maybe, maybe you're able to put on a facade while you're in public, while you're at work or school or church, but at home you're like a ticking time bomb. Consider the story of Jonah. Jonah was a follower of God, but when he was asked to go to Nineveh and preach to the people there, what did he do, friends? He fled. He was scared. And how did he respond to it? What did, he, what did he tell God in response to get, being given this task to go preach to the people in Nineveh? His fears, his worries caused him to disobey God. It was what he didn't say. He was blatantly disobeying God. His worry caused him to blatantly disobey God and do the exact opposite of what uh, God said. He showed his disrespect for God by his actions. So what about today? Well, we can't allow worry to cause us to mistreat those that we love the most. If you had a bad or long day at work, then leave that at the office or leave that at your front door. If you fail to do that, friends, then your friends, then your family and your friends will suffer. If these worries are something you can't seem can't seem to shake, then seek out those closest to you for help. Jonah should have. It would have saved him a lot of trouble, wouldn't it? And then, friends, instead of allowing your worries to cause you to lash out at those you love, then lean on those people for support. Friends, why do you think Jesus had disciples? He had 12 disciples, 11 of which were trustworthy. Why do you think he had them? 
Well, they were his sounding board. He could bounce anything off of them. They had lived on the earth for, 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 for many, many years. They had been involved. They were descendants of you know, the Jewish way of doing things. So he knew that they knew, and they could advise him and tell him how to deal with people. Who is our sounding board? Who do we confide? Who do we confide in for comfort? Well, friends, if you guess Jesus, then you're right. Look at Psalm 91, verse 2. Again, if you've got your Bibles, and I hope you do, please turn over with me uh, and look at uh, chapter, uh, Psalms, chapter number 91, verse 2. Psalm chapter number 91 and verse 2. It says, I will, say to the, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Isn't that comforting? My God in Him I will trust. Isn't it great? To have Him for that reason. To have Him for that reason. But friends, we should also remember to confide in our family members and friends. Those people are or should be our closest confidants here on this earth. So God is our sounding board. We can go to Him at any time. But we should also have family and friends that we can that we can go to as well. That should be there for us. Friends, we should use our worries to make ourselves and those closest to us better. And we should learn and grow from our worries. Don't lash out. Next time you're stressed or you're worried about something, don't stress out. Go to God in prayer. And then go to your family and your friends. Number three. Worry, friends, will kill you physically, but will also kill you spiritually. Spending your life worrying about different things that you're facing or my face will do you more harm than good. According to WebMD, worry can lead to physical ailments such as, but not limited to, headaches, nausea, heart attack, heart attack, and death. In short, worry will make you physically miserable. Worry will also lead us away from God and cause us to question Him. Think about all the time we spend worrying over things that either haven't happened yet or have happened yet don't matter in the grand scheme of things. We could instead spend this time growing in our relationship with God. Instead of worrying, why not grow in your relationship with God? Use the time that you would be worrying in prayer and study. Look with me in Matthew chapter number 11, verses 28 through 30. Matthew chapter number 11, verses 28 and 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Friends, isn't it comforting to know that Jesus is always there for us? Just like our text from Matthew 6 says, there is no reason, there is no reason for us to worry as long as we have a relationship with God. You know why? Because He can and He will take care of us. So finally, as we close, and it's funny, you remember what I said about trying to be perfect. During these entire video uh, studies, uh, there's been times where I've started and restarted 5, 10, 15 times. And uh, I don't know if you hear in the background, but uh, my, my home office here is right off the uh, kitchen. And uh, my mom is currently, I'm recording this on a Friday afternoon, and she's cooking uh, dinner. She's cooking barbecue chicken uh, for dinner. And uh, the oven, the, 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 the timer on the oven's gone off. So I guess it's done. I don't know. But I'm going to try to wrap this up as soon as I can. And uh, I apologize for that. But I'm going to try to wrap this up as soon as I can so uh, it won't burn or whatever. So, uh, but, but that just goes to show you, as hard as you try, you're not going to be perfect. So back to worry. Worry, friends, will in fact bog you down. It will cause you to be so miserable that you almost get to the point in which you can't think clearly. It, 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 it takes over your mind. Worry, those thoughts, they live rent-free inside your head. And you know what worry also does? Worry has caused more people to leave the church than any other thing. And why is this? Because worry is what causes us to lose faith in God. We worry about things, but we forget God. 
We think God doesn't care. We lose our faith. We instead put our trust in ourselves. Look, look again back at uh, the book of Psalm and uh, chapter 55 and verse 12. In Psalm 55 and verse 12, um, the psalmist is telling us, The psalmist tells us, For it is not an enemy who reproaches me, then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me. Then I could hide from him. God wants us to come to him with every need, affliction, and worry. He will bear our burdens just like his son bore our sins on the cross of Calvary. So what worry or worries do you have? Are you worried about the future? Are you worried about something in the past? Are you worried about something happening right now? Bring that. Give that to God. Give that to God. Let Him handle it and then go on with your life. Move on. If it's something in the past, bury that and go on. Don't dwell on it because it's going to bring you away. It's going to take you away from God. Friends, worry will bog you down. Just like the title of this lesson. Worry will bog you down. It will get you stuck in the mud. You won't be able to go anywhere. So friends, uh, I thank you for tuning in. And again, I'm sorry about the uh, the, the, the oven buzzer going off over here. Uh, it's, uh, again, you know, you never, you know, you don't need to worry about being perfect. Because there's nothing perfect in this life, life except Jesus, except salvation. And that leads me into my invitation. Friends, if there's somebody out there listening to this that, you know, you've been worrying about things for uh, days or weeks, months, even years. I beg you to reach out to somebody. Reach out to God, most importantly. But reach out to somebody that you're close to and ask for prayers. Reach out to the Church of Christ in your area. We're so blessed in this area that there seems like there's one on every corner. Reach out to that congregation. If you live in the Granville the Chestnut Mound, the Elmwood, the Buffalo Valley area. Reach out to us. Reach out to us. We'd, come, we'd love to come and study the Bible with you and pray with you. Maybe you want to be baptized. Friends, we'd love, to, we'd love to talk to you about that. You don't have to be baptized as part of our service. You can be baptized at any hour of the day, any day of the week. Friends, don't worry. 2020, there's been so many things go wrong. But in the end, we know it's going to be worth it. Heaven, it's like the song says, heaven will surely be worth it all. Friends, we love you. The Chestnut Mount Church of Christ loves you. God, most importantly, loves you. Please take care. Please share this message with your friends. And God bless you.